my very first animal painting. You ready for this? Let's go! Welcome to my channel. My name is Mimi, which is a nickname, and today I'm doing a different kind of painting uh, that I've been wanting to, tr you know, try, but I haven't really done it yet, which is a animal painting. There's a couple of firsts happening in this particular painting, and uh, if you want to know what my thoughts are about the painting, stick around till the end, and I'll give you, you know, my own opinion on it. So I'm working on my background here and the, what I did what was different at this with this painting is I actually sketched on the paper which I've never done before so that was a first and I'm also working on a bit of a blurry type background and I want the bird eventually to be like the centerpiece of this painting and uh, there's a lot of things I learned in this process I can tell you that much already and if you're wondering about my voice, yes, I'm actually sick. So if I don't sound as chipper or if my voice really sounds muffled or, you know, like I have a cold, yes, I do. I kind of went in with the wrong kind of um, brush but I also challenged myself because once I picked up this brush I figured you know what let's just do it with this brush and see how it turns out and uh, I think it would have been better if I had a bit of a more of a rounder softer brush but um, you know you learn from making mistakes right and uh, I mean in the long run it did eventually turn out okay it just took me a little while to get there So full disclaimer, I'm a self-taught artist. I have not gone to art school. I haven't really done any local art courses or anything. I am inspired by others on Facebook and I just kind of figure things out as I go. So yeah, if that's what you're into, follow my journey. And if you are actually a well-seasoned artist, hey, feel free to give me tips. I am open to them at all times. I apologize for not uploading on my normal day, which tends to be Friday. Um, I actually was sick last weekend as well, and then I got a bit better. And uh, at the same time, we also decided to add a furry family member. So we are now uh, owners of a lovely American Eskimo dog. She's a sweetheart, and I have been finding myself outside, you know, walking her, doing some training. I mean, she's awesome and very loving. And we're very, very happy that she's part of our family.
So I did spend quite a bit of time in on doing the background and uh, yeah I mean let me know what you think and whether there's an easier way probably is <laughs> to do this a little bit more um, efficiently I guess but I was happy that eventually I just decided that's it I'm gonna leave it for what it is and we're gonna move on to another part of the painting sometimes I just gonna have to step away from what I'm doing Otherwise, I'm getting just a little too obsessed and I try to be like a little perfectionist and with art, eh, it doesn't always work out that way, does it? So yeah, I'm just filling in the play space that is supposed to be for the branches. And this is just basically one single color and I'm just blocking it in and then I'll come back into this later with more details. This is not a really difficult process because I just basically fill in the space that I've already sketched out with one single color. I just got to make sure that, I don't know, around where the flowers are or where the, uh, the bird's going to be, there, you know, its feet, that I just change up the brush like you just saw me do and, you know, don't just go in like a crazy person. Set yourself up for success, right? Or at least try to. So fun fact, October 4th was Animal Day and um, I come from a country where that day actually kids are allowed to bring, you know, a pet to school to share with their classmates. Um, here in North America, it's not even really recognized, at least not in Canada. I don't know about America, but yeah, anyway, um, so that was on the 4th of October, which with that in mind, I also decided to do an animal painting. However, my birthday was last Friday and I joined the 40 club I actually turned 40 years old I know it's kind of crazy so on to a little bit more excitement starting to do flowers now I have not really done flowers before except for like tiny flower you know details on like landscape paintings um, but this is a more up close and personal kind of, you know, flower. And um, I enjoyed working with the color for sure. But it's, uh, it is a bit of a new territory for me. So those that are into doing florals, yeah, some tips please. I mean, it wasn't hard to create a little bit of depth with just a different shade of color. But at the same time, I'm like, I think I have a lot to learn about this still. Um, but I was having fun just filling in like the white spots on the canvas at this point and playing with some, you know, colors like pink and white and red. I've been wanting to get into more uh, realistic type paintings and also wanted to try my hands on, on animals. And so yeah, this is my very first attempt at that. And uh, I still love doing 
landscapes, but I needed to challenge myself a little bit and just to further my skills and to see what I'm capable of. You don't know until you try, right? Oh, and to all my Canadian friends out there, happy Thanksgiving. We have our Thanksgiving weekend right now. And uh, I don't really do much about Thanksgiving because I'm not really a Canadian, right? I'm from Europe. I'm from the Netherlands. We don't really celebrate Thanksgiving there. So um, we did have, you know, like my birthday. So we did some, you know, yummy food. Think junk food. And uh, we made our own pizzas together, so that was kind of fun as a family to do that with lots of leftovers. But I'm not the one that will cook a turkey. First off, I don't really know how. Second, I don't really feel like putting in hours of prep for kids to either say, I don't want it, or for the food to be gone within like five seconds. That to me just a waste of my energy, and that's just my own personal opinion. But And all the power to you you know, that do actually put on a huge, big Thanksgiving dinner. Awesome. You can invite me anytime. trying to add a little bit of the like the center part of the flower and I do have a reference photo because I would not be able to do this like just out of my own head you know my head doesn't really produce images like that <laughs> so hey thank thank heavens for reference photos nothing wrong with that especially if you want to do like pet portraits you're gonna need a reference photo right so because I would like to see if I'm if I'm any good at that, I would love to be able to do uh, that kind of commission work. But, you know, I have to start somewhere, so I'll practice for now. And, uh, yeah, you guys can let me know what you think of this painting by the end, obviously. Because so far, all you know, all you've seen is a background, branches that still need details, and some flowers. Okay, now we're going to go back into the branches, though. Can you see me use this? technique before. It's basically a stippling technique. This is a pretty stiff brush and I just want to create some texture. So I've just got a bit of a sagey, mossy, greenish type color on there and I basically go over the whole branch just to create a texture. And obviously I have to go into with a smaller brush to get into the smaller spaces. Notice I haven't gone into my tiniest of line brushes yet. Still just laying down a bit of a rough basic here, but I really enjoy doing this part because your painting's starting to become more realistic in a way, a little bit more put together. Because up until this point, I was not really sure where this was going. And so I'm adding a different color, more of a lighter color. And for those who are new working with acrylics, acrylics do dry a bit darker. And I forget half the time. <laughs> so uh, I have to make sure that actually the shade on my brush is just a tad lighter than what I want it to be. That throws me off <laughs> a lot of times. And there are my liner brushes. And I, I don't, I'm not going in with like black, black, even though it's a really dark color. It is a mixture of some colors together that is pretty dark because I wanted to make sure that I was able to create some shadows. 
and again this is one of my favorite parts and my apologies for the wiggling of the camera I did not have it set up far enough back so whenever I would move on the chair um, the camera would kind of wiggle I'm not really thinking too much of the placement here. I'm just kind of randomly putting in, you know, color. Uh, however, thinking of the light, kind of hitting it from the right side. As you can see here, that the back, like the, the left side of the branch here is a bit darker, creating a bit of like this shadow illusion. And that's kind of how I do it. But this is all just like random brush strokes, not really all that thought out and there's the wiggling again my my apologies <laughs> well the flowers need a little bit more attention a little bit more detail my smallest line brush comes really handy and it like comes in really handy and all of a sudden it's starting to look more like a flower. And I didn't like how that looked like one big blob of pink so I kind of tried to create an illusion that there's three flowers on that end rather than one with just a weird oversized petal. So. And then it's time for the little red robin to take its shape. Now I did go in with a fairly dark grayish color. Regretted that a little bit later. That was a little too dark, but it's okay. I decided, well, I put the strokes on the canvas as may, I may as well stick with it and we'll use it as a like shadow sort of base layer that you can just go over top with lighter tones and try to create some depth. But yes, I know, a robin is not this dark. Trust me, I know. Now here I'm taking a little bit of a risk. I just added titanium white to already you know sort of full brush to create this bottom part of the bird and blend it basically on canvas and um, I'm happy that it turned out well but at the same time I was a bit uh, nervous because I wasn't sure if I was able to pull this off the tiniest of brush strokes for those tiny little legs and feet. So I went in with one color and then I decided to go in with a lighter shade to create some highlights and whatnot and it all of a sudden starting to become a little bit more two-dimensional three-dimensional or starting to become more like realistic that way but I will fill in the little white parts with a darker shade to create a bit of an illusion of a shadow where the feet are hitting the branch now 
Moving on to the actual um, chest part of the bird, it took me a little while to mix the color to get the right kind of color. I don't have like an orange on hand. I mean, I do, but it's like my dollar store paint and I'm really trying to use my more higher end paints. So it took me a little while to get this color, but I think it turned out okay. Then I'm going to back in with a little bit of a lighter shade, filling in like the spaces that I left untouched. I mean, nothing makes me more happy than to have that canvas like filled with paint. Like I don't want to see anything like any white shining through. And even lighter shade, just trying to create, you know, more depth, more dimension, more what what have you. And here comes my stippling technique again to try to create a little bit of a like a softer look. And uh, I wasn't quite sure if this was going to work, but I actually quite liked the result of this. I mean, those wings are a bit dark, right? So we're going to have to lighten them up a little bit. Plus, we need to create a little bit of a you know. A transition between the chest and the other part of the bird. I don't want it to be too sharp of a contrast. Going in with a bit of a grayish tone, trying to create like strokes that look somewhat like feathers. Remind you, this is my first bird painting, so if you've done lots of birds and you know how to get that like right texture onto a canvas, let me know in the comments. I would be happy to take your tips and tricks and be able to increase my skills and become a better painter that way. So I did spend some time on, you know, this part of the painting. I really wanted the birds to be my main focus. I was quite happy to get started on it because I left it till the very end. And it wasn't until I actually put some, um, you know, texture on the tree that I started to become a little bit happier with the painting. Because up until this point, I'm every time I looked at it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have no clue what I'm doing, it, which I didn't. And I wasn't sure if this painting was actually going to turn out okay. And even at this point, I wasn't sure. But at least I was working on a bird. And that made me a lot happier just to try my hand on something new and see if I can actually pull off a realistic looking animal. So right now, I, all I'm doing is tiny details with my little liner brush, different colors, different shades, to try to make it look, you know, like actual feather type, whatever, what have you. Zoom, zoom in too too far because then it becomes really grainy but the fact that I could zoom in this far without it becoming um, too blurry is pretty good I hope you get a good enough view of what I'm doing somewhat and now I'm going back onto the face to create a little bit more uh, depth there a little bit more detail try to get that beak in the face
I'm barely touching the canvas here. And in hindsight, I probably should have put more paint on the canvas doing the bird. Because in my opinion, it kind of almost looks like a bit of a, a watercolor type painting right now. Like especially the bird, it doesn't have that thickness that you can create with um, acrylics. But like I said, trial and error, you never know until you do it. And this was an exciting part where I started to get a little bit more highlights in the eyes to make them look like actual eyes, to make the animal more alive. And if you've made it this far into this video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I will tell you that I'm not 100% happy with how this painting turned out. And you'll see the end result in like, you know, two minutes. But this was not how I had it in mind. And I think my mistake was to spend a little bit too much time on the background and the branches and the flowers. I think I really should have focused on the bird more and had the bird probably about two or three times bigger than the size it is right now. But hey, that's fine. It's all good. It's a learning curve. And I mean, I still am proud of myself for trying. I just not 100% happy with the result. And that's okay because I learn and that's more important than anything. And it can only go up from here, right? Like keep following me and you'll see if I'm going to get better at doing, you know, birds or animals. Maybe birds are not my thing. Maybe it's, you know, uh, other kinds of animals that don't have feathers but have fur. Who knows? Final touch on those eyes. There's plain white. I kind of try to keep that for the final touches on my painting because lighter than that you can't get it, right? And now I'm going in with a bit of a yellowish tone just to create again some highlights and but also depth by doing so at least I hope. And there you have it, my red robin. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you in the next one.